Mark, it's so great to have you here in Atlanta for the first time with the ASO. And Thank you. Uh, one great. of the things that struck me about this piece, um, in your note, you talk about how it's inspired by the character of Ophelia, but there's mm -hmm. a dramatic quality to the music as well, and I wondered if you could talk a little bit about that. Sure, yeah. So the idea behind this piece came from when I first looked at the other pieces on the program. I noticed um, both, you know, obviously come from operas, and my first thought was, I wonder if they'll let me write a 10-minute opera. But then I thought, you know, that's probably too many moving parts. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> um, I decided, I, I looked a little bit closer at the other uh, pieces, and I noticed, you know, in, in both we have these almost kind of sidelined women, in a sense. Ellen and Peter Grimes is so important to the story, but, I mean, at the end, she's just left high and dry, uh, literally, I guess, uh, as Peter wades off into the sea. And I, I always wondered what happened to her after, you know. In uh, The Valkyrie, uh, I always wondered why it was Siegmund and not Sieglinda that pulled the sword out of the tree. You know, and what happens to Sieglinda after the story moves on. And so I noticed there was this trend of women in major works who, you know, were important, but we didn't hear enough from. So I thought, why not tell a dramatic story of another famous character, Ophelia, and of course Shakespeare's Hamlet, who is, again, so important to the story. But when you reread through Hamlet, we know surprisingly little about her. We know her family. We have whole scenes where all she says is, yes, my lord. And so I, I wanted to kind of flesh out who this character was, um, be dramatic, like you said, uh, but not necessarily make a program piece where I have a one-for-one -one comparison with everything throughout. So I just tried to kind of flesh out her character and give her a story by uh, writing a few songs, I guess, orchestral songs for her. And you capture, it seems to me, different facets of the Ophelia you imagine. Yeah, for sure. At the beginning, there's this uh, almost naive, oversimplistic Ophelia. As she's portrayed in Shakespeare, it's almost this girlish, excitable quality, almost. And then she's faced with these really tremendously difficult circumstances. Uh, her you know, partner, boyfriend, whatever, either feigns madness or goes mad, and she has to deal with that. And then she, in the end, goes mad herself. Such a trope uh, from you know literature. And so I get to look at these interesting facets of Ophelia and say, what does that sound like in an orchestral palette? What does her dealing with some of these difficult things uh, sound like? Speaking of orchestral palettes, you use the orchestra so beautifully. And oh, thank you. It sounds, from the way you write, it sounds like you uh, care so much about the colors that the orchestra can produce. For sure. I listen to a lot of Ravel and Stravinsky, and while I would never compare myself with such incredible orchestrators, I feel like I get to be this painter you know, with, with, with all of these colors, of course, with the Atlanta Symphony, with such a wonderful orchestra, but also so many incredible combinations that many of which aren't used enough, I feel like. These Thanks days. for a beautiful piece. My pleasure. Thank you.